If you have a website on Squarespace and you're trying to figure out how to get it up on Google, (laughs) because hint, if you just hit publish, that doesn't do it. (laughs) It is actually pretty easy though. And I'm going to actually show you step by step. Don't worry. This is not going to be a long tutorial because Squarespace makes it super easy to make this connection and to make this an ongoing thing so that when you post a new blog, it goes right to Google. (laughs) But before I dive into that, if we haven't met before, my name is Caitlin. I run Launch the Damn Thing. I am a Squarespace educator and web designer. Did I say that backwards? (laughs) I have been running my online business for a few years now, and I have a lot of thoughts to share, tips and tricks that I've learned along the way, and plenty of mistakes to share with you so that hopefully you won't make the same ones that I did. (laughs) All right, so let's dive in and make this a short one. (laughs) To get started, what you wanna do is pull up your browser, whatever you're using. I tend to use uh, Google Chrome because it tends to be the most recommended for online web-based apps or browser-based apps. If you go to Google search and type in literally Google search console, the first result that you will get will probably be this one, search.google.com, which if you type in, you just get regular Google search. So don't do that. Just literally search for it. And then when you click on the link, it'll take you to this new sign up page. Just click start now and create a login with whichever Google account you want to associate with your business in your business website uh, or your personal website, whatever. <laughs> so click start now, create your login. And once that is established, hop back over to Squarespace and I will show you how to connect it to your website. Go back over to your website in Squarespace and from the main area, anywhere where you can access the side panel over here, you'll just look for analytics. So select that and then look about midway down in the acquisition section. There is an area or a link called search keywords. If you click that, you'll be prompted to connect your website to the Google search console account that you just created. So if you click connect, it will prompt you to log into that same account. So from that pop-up, you would click on the account you want to connect to this website. So make sure that they match. (laughs) Once you've selected that, it will ask you for permission to connect it to this website. So you'll click allow. And from there, it will do its thing. And then it will say you're connected, but you're going to have to wait 72 hours to see any data here. Google is going to be crawling this and associating associating it with your uh, Google search console account and your properties listed there. So it will not be immediate. But while you wait, there's a couple of things that you can do over in Google search console to get this kicked off. (laughs) If you come over to your Google search console panel from the overview area, you have a menu of options over here. And I'm not going to go through all of that because the most important ones that we're going to use to get started is your sitemaps area. If you click on sitemaps, you can submit the sitemap for your website uh, right here at the top. And luckily for you, Squarespace also makes this part very easy. They generate a sitemap for you. So at this point, you've already connected the domain through Squarespace, which means Google has added a property to your Google Search Console account. And by property, we're talking about your domain and your website here. So it's already done that part for you. That's probably the easiest way to get this done. And then from the sitemaps panel, it already has it plugged in because you've already added it as a property. So that more complicated part is already done. Now we're going to go to sitemap.xml. So this is generated for you by Squarespace, so you don't have to do it. But this is the same slug to access the sitemap for all Squarespace users. So whether it is this website or your custom domain, whether it's launchthedamthing.com, whatever it is, it's always going to be backslash sitemap. Dot .xml. So type that in and then click submit and that will actually request Google to go check out your sitemap, see all the pages that are currently published and available to crawl, 
see what the settings are because sometimes on our websites, we will tell Google not to crawl specific pages. For example, I typically turn SEO indexing off for legal pages and the error 404 page and things like that. So your sitemap with Google Search Console will tell Google which of those pages are available to crawl and which ones are not. And that will begin the cycle again. So we have a 72 hour waiting period over in Squarespace in the analytics panel. After that period, you'll be able to actually see Google Search Console analytics here within your Squarespace website. And then over here within about 72 hours, you will also see additional information that Squarespace doesn't bring over. It's a great place to keep coming back to. I definitely suggest that you bookmark it because it will become your friend. <laughs> And luckily it's a lot easier to use than Google Analytics 4 or whatever you're used to in Google Analytics, Universal Analytics, which is what was available before that. <laughs> so that's the second step, right? We have connected it in Squarespace. We've submitted our site map. I'm gonna pretend that I did that. This is actually a demo site that I do not want to have Google indexing. And it's also not published but you've submitted the sitemap, it'll show up down here and it'll tell you approximately how many pages are discovered. Uh, so if you have like a five page website or a 20 page website, like it should show you the approximate number of pages that Google can find for it. And you can check to see if there are any errors in the submission. The last step that you probably should do is to go up here in the top and put in your home page. This is to inspect the URL, which is a forced submission to reiterate. It's a redundant process that's not necessarily required, but it's just like an extra precautionary step. So if you go ahead and put in your home page, so if I go back over to my real domain, let's do this one. And if we click inspect and I do HTTPS, if I can type, If I submit my home page, I will get something that looks like this that says, hey, we've already crawled that, you're doing good. <laughs> if it says it's not on Google, then you can click this request indexing and it will actually go index. It's a manual request for Google to go crawl that page. You can do this for up to 10 pages, I believe, of your website. So you can do this for all of the main pages. I could also do that for my about page and my services page and my blog page and whatever pages are more most important to me up to about 10 I think is the limit. So if you do that for each of the main pages that are most important on your website and you submit indexing for all of them, takes a, just a few extra minutes, then you've just about guaranteed that Google is not only going to find your newly published website, but it's also going to know that it exists so that it can try to put it in search results for people that are searching for keywords that you are using on your website. So you have a much better chance at getting your website on Google and starting the ranking process, even though you've just launched. <laughs> An ongoing tip that you should implement in your blogging system if you are a blogger or sharing content on your website is to actually share the post with Google every time you do a new post. That is going to save your ass <laughs> and basically prevent you from waiting for Google to accidentally find or stumble across your website on some unknown time frame, right? This is just an easy way for you to automate the process when you post something new to say, by the way, Google, I've just posted something new. Please, for the love of God, go check it out. <laughs> so when you create a new post, whether it's new or old, you can always do this. In Squarespace, it's super easy. From existing posts, you would go into this settings panel and then into the share tab. And because you've already connected Google Search Console to the website, this will be here. <laughs> Probably in addition to your other connections like Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, whatever else you've connected in your social links or connected accounts, this one will be there too if it's connected in your analytics panel. So if you click that, you get a little toggle, which you can turn on or off. And if it's on, it will automatically send the title and URL to Google Search Console for you as soon as you click save. 
So if I were to click save, it would go ahead and do that. It would tell Google to come analyze and index this page. I'm not going to do that because this is an unpublished demo website that I do not want to rank in Google. <laughs> For draft posts, it's a little bit different because you can do it at the same time you're doing all of the other steps for normal blog posts. If you click up here in the top middle of that white kind of editor bar, that actually brings up the settings panel for this blog post in particular. So if you go down to your share settings and go ahead and enable this, then when you go into options to set your blog status to scheduled or publish, it will automatically send this index request to Google Search Console when it is actually published. So whether I publish it now or next year, it will do the index request automatically at whatever time that is, whatever time you set. So that's the way to access it from within the actual blog post. And then if you are out here and you have drafts or something that's marked as needs review or that kind of thing, you can access it from here too by clicking that same ellipsis menu as we did for this already pre-existing post and then just going into your settings panel. And again, we're going to the same area, share, and then clicking on that and then toggling it on and then saving your changes. So there are multiple ways to access that one area. I always turn that on when I know that I'm ready to schedule or publish a post. That way I don't have to actually be at my computer at 6 a.m. on a Saturday or whatever <laughs> date and time I'm publishing this article so that Google will get it right away and I don't have to write it down somewhere and remember to do it manually. After you've done all of that and set up your best practices for implementing this on new blog posts going forward, Make sure there's a couple of, let's call them best practices that you follow for new content that you're posting and sharing to Google. So let's talk about that for a second. Real quickly, short pages with minimal content. Let's say it's hard for Google to analyze. So if you have one page that has maybe 50 words on it, Google's not really going to understand what that page is there for. It's not going to have enough information to provide anything of value to understand why that page exists on your website in order to show it to the right people. So those pages aren't going to rank for anything, really. They're not going to have much of a chance for that. On the other hand, if you have a minimal content page like a contact page, typically, you want to make sure that if you want that page to rank at all, that it has at least 300 to 500 words on it. So Google can have a chance at indexing it for you and where it should go in the ranking system that it uses. So that's tip number one to make sure that your content on the page is lengthy enough for Google to understand what that page is supposed to be doing on your website. The second issue that I see a lot is that the page structure isn't ideal for Google. So it doesn't understand the order of the content or it can't use the content uh, to analyze what's there because you're not following best practices. So for example, if you're not using any headings, it's really hard for Google to see the overall outline of what the content is. That's why we use headings, right? And if you're not sure about that, you probably want to head over to my blog. I'll put the link in the description below. I have an older post that goes through that in detail so you can see it all laid out. Essentially, you want to have a heading one one time because that is the title of the entire page. And you want to have a heading two, maybe a handful of times, and then a heading three and or four <laughs> the rest of the time. The ones and twos are higher in the hierarchy. They're more important. So have them available fewer times. If you have a bunch of heading ones because you're using them for stylistic purposes, Google's going to have a very hard time understanding which words or which headings are more important. So use heading ones sparingly, use heading twos slightly less sparingly, heading threes slightly even less sparingly, <laughs> and heading fours slightly even more less <laughs> sparingly. <laughs> So basically, heading fours, you can use a lot. Heading threes, you can use 
a little less, heading twos, a little less, heading ones, even less, right? So that's the pecking order for those. And if you structure your page well, Google can use them to actually build an outline overview of what the page actually has on it. And then it can crawl the rest of the information and organize it in order to show it to the right people in search results. So those are the two main mistakes that I see. If you can take all of that into account and use it with the tips I gave you earlier to connect your website to Google, you are on a roll, my friend. (laughs) And your website will have a much better chance to rank on Google and get more people's eyes on your website because that is the whole point, right? (laughs) So I hope this video was helpful for you today. If you loved this video and you had no idea that Squarespace could do those things, like and subscribe for more tips and... I will see you in the next video. Bye.